Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Java Chat. This is Coffee with Mike. It's time, guys, and I'm sitting here with a, a new friend, somebody that I got to meet at a uh, at a at a class um, with John Story, who's somebody I really respect as far as the real estate coaching uh, arena. Uh, this gentleman is the owner and broker of Cornell Realty. His name is Corey Schaefer. Corey, thanks for hanging out with me today. Um, yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. And, and having a cup of coffee with me. You know, you're like. I, it is early. Maybe the second or third guest that's actually remembered to bring their coffee. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's all good. All right. And, and let me make sure that we're streaming live properly online. I always check just to make sure that we're, we're good. It looks like we are. Da -da 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 -da. Guys, what we're going to do today is we're, one, one, we're going to talk with Corey about startups because the man's been in business for a while. Uh, he's been in real estate for 20 years. Does that sound right? 17. Yeah, Seven, almost 17. 18. This this uh, this year will be 18 years. So. Awesome. So there it is. We are live. It is streaming. Sweet. I will turn that down. So you got here in what? 98. 1998. I moved to Las Vegas uh, from Oklahoma. That's where I was uh, in school. You know. Oh, I was going to say, you, you, you moved out of Tornado Alley and you came to the desert. That was interesting. Moved out of Tornado Alley. I was a, a military brat. So originally I'm from the Bay Area, San Francisco. Gotcha. I was in the Bourne area. That's where my mom is from. What part um, of the Bay? My dad was, what's that? What part of the Bay? Um, actually in the city, Daly City. I was really? born actually on Presidio, yeah, when, on the military base, or when it was a military base. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now it's a park. Um, and then my dad was a uh, Marine Corps and then Army career uh, guy. So we ended up in Oklahoma after our tour in up and down the West Coast and then in Europe. Um, then we ended up in Oklahoma, which is where I finished school and uh, came to Las Vegas. And I've been in Las Vegas since, and I love it here. So it's my home. What was the lure of Las Vegas back then when you moved over? I mean, 98, like, there wasn't um, going on out here, if I remember correctly. <laughs> The uh, the growth in '98. If you think about it, uh, that's when Mandalay Bay opened. That's right. That was the yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was a huge boom. I was young. I was 21, um, looking for a, a place to hang out and call home that wasn't going to break me. So I got here and I got hired. I think I was here. I came here in a suitcase uh, and a backpack. And within that that week, I had three jobs lined up at Whoa. three different casinos. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they were just they were hiring like 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 crazy. So it happens with everything. I mean, we we saw it happen with Aria. We saw it happen with Mandarin. And everybody opened up at City Center. The same story happened. So totally get that. And it's going to happen again. We got the world. Uh, was it the world uh, resorts? World um, resorts is opening. Um, we'll get it again in around 2023 when the former Fountain Blue, now the Drew, uh, yep. is scheduled to open, and and that's a bigger property again. So yeah, we're gonna see we're gonna see some spurts over and over for the next I guess five years. Yep, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I think it's gonna be huge. Well, so you came here with a with a suitcase and backpack, got into the casino industry. What did you do in casino? Um, I was a bartender for a few years at uh, New York, New York. So you were a chemical therapist, is basically what I'm saying. Chemical therapist. <laughs> this is probably the best job of my life, actually. I, you, you know, you get um, to really meet some cool people. Yeah, you, you met new people every day, um, good people to work around. So yeah, it was one of my favorites. Probably, one I could. The, that's probably one of the better professions for people with short-term memory loss. Right. They never have to worry about remembering anybody. <laughs> uh, okay, so what made you transition from that into real estate? Because I mean, seventeen plus years, dude, that's a while. Yeah. Uh, well, I um, started buying property. Um, and selling and then a friend of mine got into the industry at about the same time and I kind of followed into it. Mm -hmm. um, it turned out to be a, a natural fit. I had uh, met my wife um, at, at about the same time and she was doing loans so we kind of uh, meshed at that ah, point. So the, the good marriage. Nice. Yeah. So she doesn't anymore but um, I, I spent um, a career now with this is my fourth and final brokerage so you had three before this global banker um and then uh, i discovered the 100 percent shop liberty realty um, oh, i remember yeah which i remember liberty i spent um 
five years there. Mm -hmm. And then the last stint was uh, 10 years over at uh, Realty One Group. And now you're in your own deal. Now I am in my own deal. So take me through that process because a lot of times what we do at Java Chat is we talk about startups. And yep. the process of being, an, of being a, um, a professional and independent contractor to a vendor to an entrepreneur stepping out on your own, creating something new, um, is a journey. And for some, it's a harrowing journey. Um, it's not easy and it's not meant for everyone. We all know that one. Um, but take us through the process of what happened. I mean, did you start thinking about it way back at Coldwell, Liberty, Realty One, or did all of a sudden one day you just went, screw this, I'm on my own, I'm doing it? How did that, how did that play out? Um, I was pretty content as an independent contractor. And that's uh, what I find a lot of agents when they get to that um, you know, comfortable threshold, you've got a, a decent clientele, sure. a decent salary coming in. Sure. Um, you know, there's, there's no real need to change. You know what your, your annuals are going to be, you know, um, when to show up, when not to show up, when to take your vacations. Right. Um, that was a 10 year, um, cycle that I was in, mm -hmm. uh, but I started, um, uh, doing a bit more and, uh, I was excelling beyond that brokerage. Um, as far as uh, licenses um, and when it got to that uh, corporate level where I was say, saying hey I want to carry this license and this license um, and I was getting shot down over and over they wanted to keep me down um, you know to the base of what their company was about um, and there was no room for acceleration so the only way to do it was to create my own uh, concept um, and create my own um, so company your own company yeah. your own brand so how did you land on cornell i mean talk talk a little bit about the brand and, and the process of coming around to that um the biggest thing is we what i what i enjoyed when i moved to these local companies it started with liberty realty it was a local company yeah uh, we had that local feel and then when they um collapsed and i had to find another local feel company uh, i went to realty one group and realty one group was a local company at the time it was young uh, there weren't too many agents i want to say i was in maybe the the first 25 agents that were at that company where was at that the time. where was that first branch was that the one over by uh, office of Sahara or um there was one up that way but the one that i moved over to was in the southwest it was on las vegas boulevard in silver Auto ranch because i was at the southwest office for okay Liberty. i remember that office too okay cool it was a real tiny little boutique yeah <laughs> lynette Coles was the the broker over there had some hustlers in that in those offices though they they didn't they were pretty hungry. I remember some of the guys from the from this hair office were pretty cool too. So yeah, that's good. Okay, please continue. It was good. It was, it was it, it, and it was it was great. It was great growing with that company. I enjoyed it. Uh, we had a good time. Um, eventually, you hit a point where you you outgrow where they're going. Um, you know, they they grew exponentially. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Across the uh, the nation uh, with their their franchising opportunities. Um, which is great but as they grew on that level it lost that local appeal for me and that's when the uh, the thought process started and so, so i'd say it started probably about two years ago um working in uh, with the different companies that that i was doing we're being, bringing businesses here now through my company um to set up you know they're moving basically moving their branches from california to here um, i needed a little bit more license structure on that uh, to protect us to protect the brokerage uh, so that's what i did we created this my um business partner nels uh, and i sat down we've actually been sitting down for the last several years uh, discussing how to do it um, when to do it um, and, and eventually it became all right we keep postponing and postponing i mean you can <laughs> find the place and pull the trigger uh, then you're kind of all in you yeah know, you gotta, it, it, it's making that dive um, and, and putting your faith in that dive. And here we are now. Um, I think we started this November of last year. I think is when I finally got my broker license over here. Um, and uh, we spent several months in heavy development and then uh, grand opening barely made it by the end of January 31st. So our doors have now been open almost four months now. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, 
brand new company, uh, still always constantly developing new things uh, for the agents as they come over. Um, but again, a local company, we've got a little bit more um, versatility versus uh, other companies. Um, I'm more than happy to talk to anybody about versatility um, over here. Those are the kind of agents we want, the agents that uh, know what they're doing annually, but want to expand uh, their knowledge and their base in other other regions, commercial so, business aspects. So are we looking at, because it just hit me, Cornell is your name and Nell's name. It's a, it's a brand, okay, got it. That's it. Um, yeah, we, we, we went back and forth with several names. Um, we always had this one off the side. Uh, friends and family enjoyed that name a lot. Um, and then one day um, we're sitting at lunch and uh, the logo came to mind. Uh, we wanted a cool wave. We wanted everybody to join us, ride the wave with us type of scenario. Yeah. Uh, things always come in waves. If you ever, I'm from Hawaii, so I mean, when you're talking about waves, it's not just one. There's, there's always another one and there's always another set on the way in. So it's just how big it is and how, how forceful it can be. And if you yeah. ride it at the right time, you know, whatever that is, whether that's in, in tech or whether that's in you know, conventional business, et cetera, et cetera, that wave is always good. If you catch the right one, it can be a nice long yeah. ride. It can be a lot of fun. It can be quite exciting. Exci yeah, I get it, dude. That's, that's awesome. So you guys have been open for um, you said four months now. How many agents do you have? Uh, we are at 12 licenses right now. I want to get to 20 pretty quick. Yeah, you ain't so, far, dude. You only got eight left, so yeah. you'll, you'll be right there. And Once we're there, we've got some more opportunity for agents. We've got really good plans right now, um, and the way that we piece it together it makes sense for an agent that can sit down and look at their uh, numbers annually and see the savings. Um, we're, not, we're pretty transparent on uh, what we charge to be here. There's no, uh, we're not selling you uh, stock or uh, residual income it's basically a nice uh, house to work out of a uh, good broker um, and then some really cool support um, activities that we have here yeah I've, I've actually been to your office and and for those that have not been there um, it's it's there's a nice open space in the back um, their their quote-unquote bullpen doesn't really look like a bullpen that you would normally see where it's just this big open space for everybody to be loud he's actually got a nice little corner for it um, then he's got a conference table in the back room where the bullpen would normally be but it seems like a nice quieter uh it seems like a nice more relaxed quieter environment um the buzz can go happen in the back corner and then he's got a bunch of other offices that at present are open and probably be filled here shortly and then he's got a classroom that i got to attend um, a john story class in that classroom nice and nice and comfortable nice and uh, cozy great place to go do stuff you have your building set up well man so that's good that's i, I give you kudos on that one um thank you and then, of course, he sits in the back corner on the other side of the building. <laughs> Only if you need me. That's that's the that's the my my mentality on the on the I, broker I, I'm, level. Like I'm giving you I a don't time. want to be up front monitoring everybody, <laughs> but if you need me, I'm back here in the back corner. My door is open. Yeah, I'm no, and, and that was that was one of the things I did notice is your door was not closed. It was it was very open. It's it's the, I give people a hard time about that because we always used to joke back in corporate world of the ivory tower. You know, yeah. the guys that always sit up on the, on the top floor and you can never reach them because they've got gatekeepers and all that stuff. We used to laugh about that. We had a, we had a question come in, and this is a, an interesting question. Now, it's kind of a laughing question. It says, sure. not meant to embarrass you. The bottle in the background. What is that on the cart? Oh, that's my, that's my bar cart. Ah, so. Because so, <laughs> the question was, is that a bottle of vodka? <laughs> this one's actually a scotch, so I keep the scotch. In oh, the I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Uh, We're doing scotch. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Usually there's like, you know, one or two bottles up there. Right now we're down to a half bottle, so it's almost time to restock. Uh, I, I got a couple things. I'm going to have to bring you a couple things so you can add to that cart. And we'll, 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 there's, there's, a, yeah. there's a rye spirit you haven't tried yet that just came to town and it's amaze ball. So I'll, I'll, I'll bring you a bottle. Yeah, that was the question. Is that a bottle of vodka in the back? Because I think, I guess he recognized the kettle one label, I guess. Ah, <laughs> the bottle, the vodka's in the freezer up oh, okay. uh, toward uh, the conference room up the front. So. Uh, vodka we always keep frozen so uh that's well uh, and rightfully so that's a good idea <laughs> I, I, but yeah i'm always down for trying new scotches so if you want to come by is, hang out is, in the this office this is a rye spirit um that yeah. is a small batch deal made out of carroll iowa 
Um, it's literally a grandma's recipe that was created after she learned it from a, an actual bootlegger back in the 30s. Um, nice. She's quite a famed in the bootlegging community from that area. Um, that is probably one of the 10 recipes that used to be shipped out to St. Louis and Chicago. Um, prohibition, you know how that works. Anyway, yeah. uh, I've not had, it's, it's young, and yet it's got the flavor of a three to five year old. Which is really? really, really good. So I, I, I'll, I'll bring one by one day. Um, Where do anyway, you find it? Huh? Where do you find it? Total Wine. It's called okay. Iowa Legendary Rye. Great stuff. Amazing stuff. Um, they actually have a high test that's uh, 121 proof that will not burn your throat. And I've never had anything over 101 that doesn't start really peppering. Yeah. This one will burn. It'll get, it, it gives... Burns like gasoline. Yeah. When you well, get up those numbers. Yeah, what, what's really interesting is that you can actually, this one, they, they get off the still at 163 to 168, and you can still drink it off the still warm, and it, and it won't hurt. Um, You'll get the warming effect, but it won't pepper your throat. It's still smooth. I don't know how they do it. I, I'm involved with that company as far as helping them doing some marketing, but the distillery process, it, the, guy, the guy that's doing it is just a real master distiller. He's really good. Anyway, I wanted to ask... In your journey in getting to this point, yeah, what were some of the things that you and Nels had to overcome? I mean, obviously you talked about one, which was, hey, we just got to pull the trigger and get going. But what are the things that you face in the midst of all of this that that somebody else might face in just starting a business, just in general? I'm not talking about the technical stuff, you know, the, the licensing and all that crap, but like mentally, what, where was your head? Where was your heart in all of this? How did how did you get to to the point of no, we have to? I mean, this has just got to be done because it's it's not being done. Um, yeah, I mean that it is all mental, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> uh, without making that uh, that leap um, and having that, it, it is it's a leap of faith. I think um, you can have this idea rolling in your head forever, um, but again, pulling that trigger takes a little uh, a little faith that hey, everything's going to be okay. Um, and you know once you get rolling with it you know you roll with the punches and hey guess what things do end up being okay is there any is there anybody that you can think of that's been an inspiration that helped push that along anybody that you currently follow anybody that was a mentor previously presently stuff like that how, how did you there's always that little extra push yeah you got to have the faith and you got to you got to really you know, put that into your belief and, and, and go and do something, but there's usually influences along the way. Who've, who've been some of your best influences? Um, geez, that's a tough question. Um, I would assume Nels is probably one because the two of you have had to inspire each other. Otherwise, this wouldn't have happened. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a back and forth. Hey, this is what's happening today. You know, what, what are we doing? Uh, kind of splitting up uh, the activities. I always call him uh, the man with the list. Uh, because he's, he's always uh, got the list. We call it the yellow pad. Yeah. Uh, and it's basically our, our our daily activities. So I have one of those too. <laughs> I was in a class and um, what the they were talking about what do you use for your um, your CRM? And the guy was going around. I go, well, I use yellow pad. He's like, oh, great. And so there's a girl behind me taking notes. Like, <laughs> she had no idea. Yellow pad and, and so I pulled it out of my portfolio and I go, yeah, see, I just write it down here. <laughs> she goes, oh, I thought you were talking about an app. I was going to look that up later after class. <laughs> we all, we it's all whole have different thing. ways of, of managing those things. And, you know, like nowadays with all the tech that's available, it's not hard to find a CRM. It's hard to find the one that works for you. Correct. And, and whether you're technical or not is irrelevant. What works is what matters. Well, it seems like every um, product out there has one for you. And it's just getting used to it and importing. Um, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the change this, these days is we are going digital. And uh, if you're not keeping up digitally, You'll get left behind. How do you but there's still it? people like us using old school material. I got stacks of these. There's nothing wrong with using my, old school. That's my daily diary. Yeah, yeah, it's a great thing to have. I, I, I think I think what most people forget, and, and for a time I was the same way. I was one of those that forgot 
technology wasn't supposed to replace anything. It was supposed to enhance everything. So the idea of just all of a sudden running around with nothing written down and then all of a sudden your phone craps out on you and your life is gone, you know, or yeah. your, your computer has issues and you can't get into a certain program. Uh, you forget your password, which is one of the most fun ones. And you got to do, you know, I have friends that still use um, Franklin Covey. Do you remember them? Who is that? Franklin Covey, the old time book, the old time planners. Yeah. Um, in fact, my mom still has her old one here. Um, and I've actually been seriously considering picking it up and starting to use it again, just because it, it's something that I can physically open and look at wherever I'm at, and I'm not constantly dug into my phone where everything else is. Um, and it, I, think it, I think it has a tendency to break us from the technical dependency that we've gotten to in our society. I don't know if you agree with that or not, but I, I think... I've actually thought about running a, a five-day blog with, to see if I can survive without this. The answer is yes, but it's going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's going to be. You're taking messages at the office and then coming in to, to do emails and transition uh, files. I think it can be done, but I think it'd be an interesting journey to watch. Um, I, I'll tell you what, you do it. You let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll reshare it because I, I know there's a bunch of people that follow me that would totally love to watch that because it's yeah. – I think it's because – I've thought really about doing it, and, and I might do it this summer uh, just because – Let me know. Let me know. Summer's a little bit more more of a relaxed time, I think, once yeah, we hit. Yeah, you don't want to do it in the middle of craziness. Yeah, that's for sure. So, um, and they just have like a daily diary on like how I survived without it. Because if you think back, we haven't been using them that long. I mean, two thousand two two thousand four is. In my mind, uh, Blackberry, remember those Blackberries? That's what I had the... in 04. I had one of the first Blackberries and when they finally yeah. started doing that. Yeah. Um, and when you could check your email on your phone, that was a must have for the real estate industry. And, so and I had the, one. And the, and the problem, I still have it somewhere. That pro the problem with that was it started getting everybody to check their emails constantly that they forgot yeah. the rest of their day. Um, there was a point where my Blackberry had gotten so inundated, I literally just threw it on the side and said, I'm not looking at it today. Because I, I just I, I didn't want to deal with it anymore, and and yet today you and I both see it in the new generations. That's what they're doing for most of the day. Is this? They're just looking at their phones. Yeah. Um, in fact, I saw an interesting meme recently that showed um, it showed a, a street corner with the crosswalks, cars going back and forth, and the "Don't Walk" sign was on the ground. And the 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 caption was, "We had to change the positioning of the walk sign." So that people would see it, and everybody's looking down at their looking their phone. down. And as funny as that seems, not long ago I literally was out walking, and on the strip, by the way, I'd say almost forty percent of people. Yeah. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? You're here to see the sights and sounds, and you're looking at your phone. Um, I've been to business networking groups. Um, the most memorable was, and, and I actually put this in my book. The most memorable was sitting over at Blue Martini one night for one of the, um, I think it's called Network After Work. Yeah. And you know there's that the bar in the back? When you walk into Blue yeah. Martini, you go all the way in the back, there's that second bar in the back. And they got mm -hmm. some tables and stuff. And I walked up, and as soon as I walked up, I looked to the right, and there were these three young ladies. I guess they were there for the networking, but they're, all three of them were sitting there looking at their phones and giggling. And they didn't move for quite a while, I couldn't tell you the exact amount of time, because you know, 30 seconds is an eternity, but they yeah. wouldn't move off their phones. They, I, don't, I don't remember them ever getting up and doing any networking that I could see. And I'm thinking, this has become a ball and chain. Our lives are getting tagged to this. So a five day, a five day cleanse off of that, dude, I wanna see it. I wanna yeah, see it. Yeah, Monday through Friday, I wanna, I, I wanna, um, I, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna set it and I'll let you know the dates that I'm doing it and I'm just gonna just run a video diary on it um, how I, I feel every day without it you gotta do the video on your computer you can't use your phone yeah five days <laughs> so Pull up a new phone. Let, let me ask you a question 
What would yeah. be your biggest piece of advice to somebody that's thinking about starting a business? Now, you, you obviously did it in a brokerage setting in real estate, but I mean, I got a lot of people that are thinking about starting up ideas or coming out with a new app or something like that. What what would be your biggest piece of advice to them thinking about? Do it. Do it, yeah. Um, my biggest thing is I after getting it done was why didn't I do this four years ago? You know, it... it, it there's a there's a, a feeling of freedom once you get to that point. Yeah, it's a lot of work, you know, getting everything in line, the attorneys, paperwork, contracts, uh, licensing, uh, fire inspections, you know, the, the stuff that goes with it. But once you get to that point um, and you have complete control over uh, what you're doing without checking for permission, um, it's it's liberating. And, um, yeah, my, my biggest thing is, you know what, if it's an idea and you plan it, do it, you know, there, there, there is a, uh, you know, that, that fear, that element of fear that, Hey, it's gonna, it's gonna fail. Um, so that's, that's always, that's always been a struggle doing it. But, um, like I said, you roll with the punches uh, and you move forward. That's my number one advice is if you have it, do it. The, the four letter F word that everybody worries about. Yeah. Fear and failure or fail. Uh, and we, we've talked about that with a few people that are coaches, that are mentors, and other business owners like yourself. And that comes up quite often as a, you know what? You can't, you can't let that hold you back because whether you win or lose doesn't matter. It's whether you keep going or not. Yeah. It's always going to be there, it's never going to go away. Um, but you need to learn to uh, go with it uh, and be a, a part of it. I think a lot of people get hung up on the other part too, like you just said, is that they worry about, well, what happens when you get stuck again? Well, then you go and find a solution and get unstuck. And I, I, don't, I don't know that everybody has the, the intestinal fortitude, the guts yeah. to hang tough when stuff like that goes through. Because I, I have known people that, that have gone at it and lost it all and quit and they're working right. a job they're happy they're working a job N nothing wrong with that but they gave up and then I, I know other people that have like myself included have lost millions you know on different deals and just looked at it and went well that one didn't work now I know what else not to do yeah Next. don't do that again yeah don't do that again <laughs> learn <laughs> please learn <laughs> um but I think I think that I think that's a huge piece of advice. Don't don't worry about the fear. Just go. Just go do it. Um, yeah. It's interesting that Nike is such a. You know what Nike means? Did you ever? Did you, do you know that that's that's there's an actual meaning to that word? Acronym? No. No. It's a, uh, no. Tell me. Share. We won. So. Nike was screamed out by my marathon when he ran back from the first battle between the Greeks and the Persians. Okay. When back at, back at, I can't remember the battle of, it's not the Battle of Thermopylae, but, or maybe it was. Um, I'll have to go research it. But I remember that the story was they repelled the first attack of the Persians. Literally, the Persians got back on their boats, and the general at that time said, okay, let's just go sail around to, to uh, I think it was Athens, and just hit them there, right from the ocean. Um, so when they first repelled, the general at that time said, Marathon, head home, tell them we won. And that's, that run is the famed run that began the idea of the marathon, of course. But he ran without stopping, got all the way back to, uh, I think Athens, uh, while the army was marching. And they marched all night to make it all the way back to the city. Nike ran all the way back, and as soon as he got to the city gates, raised his arm and he yelled out Nike and died we won is what it means wow so I found that really interesting and, and I think a lot of people would find it pretty amazing to be able to do the same thing you know not yell out Nike but to get to a point where okay today we won tomorrow's yeah. another marathon or another part of the marathon we run a marathon in legs anyway um, Tour de France if you want to call it whatever but I think the more we, <clears throat> the more we focus on the forward motion, and right. what's next to be done, 
I think the easier it is for us to not worry about the fear and not worry. I think, I think fear ends up taking a side seat or a back seat to anything that we actually go after because it's just no longer as big as it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, wow, we're actually kind of early. Oh, state of the state of real estate in Las Vegas. Let's talk about that for a minute because now, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna play your expertise because I'm I'm really interested in your opinion on this only because we've seen this market hit tank hit tank and yeah. seems like we're on a hit coming up again um, because of what's being you know the Raider Stadium <clears throat> uh, World Resort coming up etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I don't know. I used to know of the projects. Now we're coming up. I, I actually used to go down to the Clark County and go pick up the ten year plan. I don't know why I did that um, to go and see what was what was in pro, uh, proposal, what was actually approved, etc. Where are we at now? I mean, are we are we on the back end of the of the wave be coming up before the new one? Are we on the crest of, or are we at the bottom of? What where are we? What are we doing? I, I always like to watch the uh, the total inventory in the greater area and to get my gauges because that's what I, I i've been watching for the last 18 years so on you know we've been through a huge recession yeah and if, major and if you look at the, the times before and the times after so the times before uh, we had that uh, the job <laughs> market um and not enough housing yeah so we were we were selling homes five minutes and hit the market <clears> for eight <throat> percent over uh, whatever the asking price was that seems concerning to me because that that seems to push a bubble again even though we did have we did have the jobs we just didn't have the inventory but and i, I don't know how you feel about that I, I i mean when we had it on the mortgage crunch i called that one in 06 that yeah. was a bad move by the mortgage industry just plain and simple. well if you, you look at the inventory back then we had maybe six thousand homes on the market yeah that was about yeah. it i remember which which was way too short yep. uh, for for the growth that we were we were at. Yep. Um, <clears throat> again, we were only at a million and a half people maybe in this town. Mm -hmm. a million people. Was it? Yeah, a million um, two I think at the time, and we had an influx of another eight to one, like eight hundred thousand yeah. to a million coming through. And then we hit that uh, recession uh, bubble with the the bad mortgages. We all know about that. Uh, but if you if you look at that that timing, um, I started during that time looking at. Um, the inventory and what what we were were sitting at so uh, a heavy decline where we were losing 25 percent um a month yeah. in uh, value. Uh, we were twelve thousand homes available yeah. for purchase yeah roughly 12 to thirteen thousand. Uh, we couldn't we couldn't sell them at that point in my mind we were looking at well is our property even going to be worth a dollar if, uh, it, it was bad. It was. It was. I mean, the, the roller coaster ride on that round was pretty deep. Yeah. And then we started the uh, the climb back, um, where our inventory uh, quickly got absorbed. Mm -hmm. um, we dropped down to that eight. I think we were even down to six thousand homes again, <laughs> and we started seeing those 20, 25 percent increases um, annually on the prices. And that was uh, two thousand eleven through two thousand. 13 yeah that sounds right we start those increases yeah so our inventory then climbed to what i felt was a little bit more steadier we were back to the eight to nine thousand uh, homes on the market uh, right now we're in that nine to ten thousand homes good. on the market good we got something to work with yeah which is um 60 to 90 day supply Perfect. which is really um I think I think that's about the best that we're going to be able to do over the next five years, only because of what you and I discussed earlier with what's coming with uh, World Resort, with Drew, some of the other yeah. things that are we got the new stadium that's we, going to be we going have in. The jobs they're moving here, so they're buying the properties. Um, we're at a point where we're not having those twenty percent increases anymore. I think yeah. ten thousand across the board. The bonuses, the interest rates are still low. I think. We looked at stuff in the low fours on the last couple that we locked in, 4.3, 4.25, something good. like that. We're still, we're still hovering in the fours. That's good. Still nice low uh, uh, mortgage rates for the consumer, so that keeps them motivated. Uh, Inventory is good where you actually have choices on properties, um, so sellers need to uh, beef up their homes uh, good. to get the number they want. Good. Um, yeah, and, and jobs is the big thing. I think population's huge too. I mean, you drive the freeway like I do. 
I've never seen so many cars on these roads. I try not to, but yes. <laughs> and, and it's mainly, it, and it's not bad. I'm not complaining at all because I, it's only my rush hour drive home where it's an extra five minutes. Not bad at all. I, I'll take yeah, it all day. I, I remember before the 215 was ever finished, how bad it was when, when I first, cause I moved here in 04 and mm -hmm. the 15 hadn't even started to look anything like what it looks like now. I mean, we still, everybody still had to stop at every traffic light and boy, the drive home was horrible. <laughs> I took oh, yeah. service. Yeah, the just front yeah. yeah, it was bad. Uh, go. Yeah. Yeah. That, that stop go was pretty mind numbing at some points in time. But, um, even now, at, at least the only time that at least on 215, the only time that I see anything really bad, um, is an accident. But even then, uh, unless there was a fatality, of course, but even then, it's, right. it's not it's not as bad as it could be. They they've done qu quite well with dealing with the congestion. For so, sure, yeah. It's, it's and they're and they're expanding more right now. So to yeah, the it, it's been interesting to watch what they've been doing downtown with the spaghetti bowl. Um, that was a mess for a while, um, but I think I think all that development it will hopefully hopefully that infrastructure restructuring will make it better. Um, it seems like. Um, the pickup off of Charleston has gotten better. Um, I know that they're working on, um, what is it, right before, between Cactus and, and um, St. Rose, they've got that new section that they're they're redoing over there, and that's looking really nice and once they finish that. <clears throat> I don't know what's going to happen with the HOV thing. I'm still watching how that works out. Um, you know, some time ago, I actually watched a DOT presentation um, with uh, at the board, uh, LBCBA board, they were talking about how they were going to restructure the the center portion of 15 from Russell to I want to say Spring Mountain or that area, possibly up to Sahara, where they were going to change that whole makeup to no longer allow commerce traffic and send them around on the 215 to the 95. Um, really? Yeah, that was it. Was a proposal. It was it was a conceptual proposal. It was actually really interesting because what they were talking about was still allowing traffic to go through on the 15, but nothing commercial, and then building an overpass, but not not just a bridge overpass, which is what we have now, but like a whole other level of, of, of flooring for pedestrian traffic to move back and forth. And I'm thinking that would make sense if there wasn't an industrial area on the other side of the 15. Right. And now we have the Raiders, and it's like... I think I see where that was going is they were thinking of putting the stadium there and possibly changing out the industrial area and creating a more retail doing a area. double strip yeah, yeah doing a double strip um, which would make sense uh, again though the new places are further up the strip uh, north of Sahara oh excuse me just south of Sahara um, where the drew is and where um, yep. world resort I always keep thinking it's Asia World. It's because that was what it was originally called until they changed the yeah. name. Um, I still call it Echelon or Stardust. They, yeah. <laughs> Boy, those were the days. I used to love the Stardust. It was such a cool place. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. <clears throat> okay, so at present, we're looking at a little better stability. Do you think we're going to get off the heavy roller coaster shots? Uh, I, board, or do my my rates? thoughts on it is if you see a spike in interest rates, which I mean we didn't, we saw that stock market come down and all that money go back in those bonds. Um, if we see a, a huge spike in interest rates, that'll definitely slow down our sins. Uh, but right now we're we're going strong. Uh, the inventory that hits, we somewhat put it into escrow. Does, so do, what are we what are we running do you have an idea of how many transactions we're running a month um, close i know that's a title question but no i didn't average? look at it this morning but i know we had let's see real quick by the way folks if you're watching this and you're wondering what the hell we're talking about it's he's in real estate i love real estate i was in mortgage we, we're, we're talking about the economy as it pertains to real estate here in La, the las vegas valley um, we happen to have a unique kind of economy out here where we've been riding a roller coaster for the last, like, I don't know, eight, nine years. Um, yeah. And we're, just, we're, we're really, we're real keen on figuring out where the stability is going to come back, even with all the new development that's coming on. That's why I'm asking this question. Um, you know, anybody who's a broker uh, watches the market very closely. Um, and, and I want to know his opinion. I want to see where it's at because for some of my followers who are investors, 
they're going to want to know this information. They're going to want to see what it's all about. And, you know, insights like this, you don't always get to have. And since I've got him as a captive for a little bit, I'm going to, I'm going to ask him and see what he thinks. Well, in the last seven days, we've turned close to 1,200 in escrow. Um, in a week? In, in, in the last seven days, yeah. Wow. And then 1,208 new listings. So we're, we're replenishing the market, but we're selling what's coming to the market. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of price decreases. Um, I've seen that too. I've, I've, been, I've been watching some of the realtors posting, yeah, just re recently reduced again. And I'm like, okay. And that's got to do with the, the seller um, thought process. So yeah. there's a lot of uh, uh, consumer friendly websites that, you know, feed them what your house value is worth. And, and those are all uh, automated, you know, triangulated computer um, sources. So if you really want advice, I would I would say go to an actual broker that's in the business and and, and can run those for you, not rely on a, a computer generated. Uh, evaluation. Well, you guys, you guys have actual access to what's actually been sold versus some of the guys that are online. I, I know what they you know, we won't mention their names because half of them don't have crap as far as i'm concerned they're off yeah, and, and, and again they're they're automated and they're they're called uh, <clears throat> all the automated valuations yeah. and, and and automated it's it's a it's a computer saying i pulled this this and this and this is what we think your property could be worth um, we it, can do that ourselves on redfin and it doesn't mean, that doesn't mean very much if you're not trained and you don't have the idea what it is they're actually looking for you're right. gonna you're gonna screw your pooch on it and you need to you need to uh, compile what's active and available yeah. what's uh you know uh, what your competition is, uh, those scenarios are, are ran by the real, the, the realtor or the realtor yeah, totally, specialist. Totally, totally. But no, we're, we're steadily selling. Uh, we're steadily replenishing. That's why I said it's, it's kind of a steady market. Um, and appraisers are helping us keep it steady. I, the last few ones, yeah, the, the prices have been coming in right about what we're, we're contracting at. Awesome. Uh, That's good to hear. That's nice to hear that the appraisers were, I, I, I was hearing for a short time that there was a bit of friction between realtors and appraisers because the appraisers weren't overvaluating, um, and, and I, I just call it overvaluating. That was they weren't pushing the values um, yeah. to where the realtors. Well, that's because we were pushing the values, and we wanted everybody else to push the values with us. And it, it takes someone to to bring it down to a common sense level, yeah, um, so that we're not. We're not um, killing ourselves again well and I, I think I, I'm, I'm like I said I'm glad the appraisers held their ground there, there were quite a few that were just like yeah we just can't um, yeah it, it's it's better for the economy it's better for the the pricing like you said so cool um, earlier I said we were early and now we're over and I love it because we get to talk about some cool stuff but I got one more question for you ask what you've gotten to the level of success you're at Congratulations mm -hmm. for one. You've opened your brokerage. You've got already 12. You're almost at your 20 mark. You're obviously doing well. You guys are pushing. In the midst of that level of success, what would you say is your biggest challenge right now? Um, <clears throat> oh, it's a I, I, clearer. It's one of those. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, because I can think about it because I think about it every day, what my biggest challenge is right now. And it's second guessing myself. Mm. Um, I have a, you know, I have a plan that's working. Um, you, you know, you always want the world now. That's the thing with the, uh, everything's at your fingertips, look it up type of scenario. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I say that's my biggest challenge because every day I'm going, well, what can I do better? And I'm constantly putting the ideas down, but it's hard to implement everything because there's only 24 hours in a day. So I'd say that's, I call it second guessing because I'm constantly thinking about how to improve, but in reality, it, it is entrepreneurship. Yeah, and that's how your mind process works. It doesn't it, it doesn't go away. No, but it is my biggest struggle. Going, am I doing this correctly? Um, what could I do to do better at this? And that's my biggest struggle because it's you can't turn that switch off. It's it's a consistent running hamster in your brain and it doesn't turn off that's I think, my biggest I, I think you'll find that most entrepreneurs have that same hamster wheel and we have a tendency to get lost on that hamster wheel once in a while to where we lose some yeah. focus on what's what's most important so i get that um i deal with it on the daily um and i know most of the most of the entrepreneurs that follow me also deal with that same exact issue 
Um, the fact that you recognize it and take some personal leadership on it is, is excellent. That's further along than, than many ever get. So um, cool, man. I really appreciate your time um, having a couple Thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, if there's anything, if there's anything that you need from me or you know, ever want to bounce ideas or something like that, you know where I'm at. You got my number, but by all means, just you know, call me up. We'll hang out. Oh, and I'll I'll, I'll the, the bottle. I'll I'll bring one by. We'll we'll try cool. it together. I think you'll. I think yeah, you'll no, let's, really yeah. I wanted to chat with you more about um, uh, marketing ideas. Oh, that absolutely. Topic. All day, all day. Happy to. Um, we'll set something up. But in any case, okay. thanks everybody for hanging out with myself and with Corey Schaefer. Oop. Corey Shea for that side. I gotta remember that this thing is flipped around, so I gotta point in the other direction to get you. Um, if you ever need him, uh, just look up CornellRealEstate.com. He's there for you. He's a resource. Use him. Uh, yep. Guy's very knowledgeable. I've had other conversations, short ones, but I know he knows his stuff, and that's that's the kind of people I like to hang out with. So, by all means, uh, wish you guys all an amazing week. Take care of each other. From me to you, love you all. Ciao, ciao for now.